Mackenzie and Baco is coming to Bloomington and to the Hoosiers with lots of expectations. Is it realistic to think he could be an all-conference player next season? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. You are Locked On Hoosiers, the one and only daily IU podcast, part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Appreciate you guys tuning in wherever that may be, whether on Spotify, whatever podcast app, or over on YouTube. You guys can subscribe to us over there. I'm your host as always, Jacob. want to thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Uh, hope everybody stayed safe over the 4th of July holiday or long weekend. That's why we're coming to you a little bit late on Wednesday. Didn't want to record on the 4th of July, but we're here and we have uh, an interesting, I think, topic to discuss. Indiana has six newcomers coming into the men's basketball team uh, this upcoming season. And I wanted to kind of separate them into different tiers. Guys that could be all conference, guys that could be, you know, quality starters, rotation players, and then ones for the future. And so um, I I think there are a couple of interesting debates to be had. We'll start at the top with uh, McKenzie and Baco uh, in the all conference caliber. I think he has the highest likelihood. It's probably the best way of saying it in uh, being a all conference caliber player next season. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he is that for the Hoosiers in uh, this upcoming season. It's a tall task. And I went back and looked at last year's all conference teams. There were three of them. And to see what type of season he would need to have to be an all conference player. I mean, off the bat, uh, Jalen hood Shafino was third-team all-conference. So if you just kind of look at that as being a barometer, do we think McKenzie and Baco could be that? I think so. I think, I mean, this is a little bit of kind of game theory. To be an all-conference player, I, Mbako is going to be able to score at a rate that will catch eyes and the stats will be uh, big on certain nights, and I think that will be important. And Jalen could do that as well. He pretty much submitted himself as an all-conference player with that Purdue game, but I think he was already considered that even before then. But if you're looking at other third-team guys, Cody Bufkin, Kobe Bufkin, Jet Howard, Clifford Amori uh, at Rutgers, even looking at the second-team guys, uh, Derek Walker at Nebraska, Chase Adij at Northwestern, Boo Booey at Northwestern, Jameer Young, I think. Uh, I, I don't think it's unrealistic to have that level of expectation on Mbako. Obviously, first team is kind of in its own right. And that was a lot of veterans and and guys who had been around the block that were on the first team last year. It's rare to have a freshman come in and be first team all conference. You're talking about star at that point. I don't think it's impossible for Mbako to do that, but I think – I mean, all, all we're setting the bar at is all conference caliber. And I think that could be him that could be his ceiling. I don't want to say that should be the expectation because that's a really high bar, but there's a, I think there is a, a pretty high level of expectation when you get a recruit of that caliber. Is he someone that can come in and give you 15 points a night? Is that asking too much? I don't think it is. I think he's going to get a lot of shots. The ball's obviously going to be in the hands of Xavier Johnson a lot, but I think a lot of shots, a lot of possessions will end with Mbako creating or shooting, things like that. He's a very gifted scorer at multiple levels, and so I think a lot of the offense will end with him by design. I don't think it's necessarily he's going to be a black hole shooting, I think a lot of the offense is going to end with him. I, if we're doing a debate about kind of all-conference caliber, though, 
Where does Kalel Ware fall into that discussion? I put him in the starter tier. If we, I, I broke it up, as I said, all conference starter, rotation guys, ones for the future. There's a pretty strong argument, I think, that Kalel Ware could be starter caliber. I think there's a pretty strong argument he could go lower than that. He has a really low ce- uh, low floor and a really high ceiling. And it really just depends on the level of optimism you have in figuring things out this season. Last year, nine and a half points, or excuse me, 6.6 points per game, four rebounds. Uh, we know we've talked a lot about it. We've looked a lot about his production last year. The If you're feeling optimistic, it's because you think he can come in. He's going to be the number one guy next season uh, at the center position, I would say, obviously. He's going to be the starter. He wasn't that last year. Uh, he wasn't outright the guy at the center position for Oregon last year. He's going to be that to start this season. And then just the the increase in the number of shots, his involvement in the offense, this offense is going to feature him quite a bit. And especially as the season wore on last year, I don't know how much that was the case at Oregon. So will the increased focus on him uh, being part of the offense, will that lead to more production? I think it will. I have a hard time jumping all the way to all conference caliber because that is quite a jump in production from what we saw. And there's a lot of variables there. He, I mean, there are legitimate concerns. He he wasn't a good three-point shooter last season. He had issues with his, I mean, this is cliche, with his motor, with his drive every game. You would think coming to Bloomington, playing for Mike Woodson would solve a lot of that. And I would tend to agree, but those uh, issues still exist. And I I still think that um, he has to shed some of that criticism and he has to prove people wrong in that regard. Is there, I don't, there certainly is a scenario in which I see him being an all conference caliber player. I just think it's far more likely he develops into a, a really quality starter and someone that he's going to have a lot of pro potential with his size, with his skill set. I wouldn't be surprised if Mbako is the all conference, if he finishes third team all conference, but Kalel Ware is a lottery pick and Mbako is a, a, like a mid first round pick like Jalen Hood Shafina was. NBA scouts are going to love his size, his shooting ability. Uh, things like that. But I I think both of them, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with both of them as all conference uh, guys at the end of the season. If it is that thing, that means things went really right for the Hoosiers during the season. And I would really like that. But at the end of the day, I think the most likely outcomes are I am Baco being all conference, which is again, quite the burden on him most likely almost feels like a too much to put on him. If you're weighing out all of the possible outcomes, if you're Dr. Strange in, uh, in the Marvel movies and you're looking at all the possible outcomes, the 14 million of them, I would think more often than not, he ends up as an all conference player. And let me know if you disagree, but I, I think he has a skill set to do that. I think with Kalel Ware, more often than not, he ends up just as a quality starter on this team, which isn't a bad thing. And he can still be a very impactful player while being a quality starter. I think he very much could be all defensive team this season. I I would put him high as anybody on the Hoosiers next year for being on the all defensive team. And I think that'll be a spot he anchors down this upcoming season. So Do you guys disagree? Do you think that both of these guys should be all conference? Neither of them. Let me know below. Let's jump to a couple of other transfers that the Hoosiers have coming in and where they fit in this with Anthony Walker and Peyton Sparks. Uh, We'll dive into them here in a moment. First, let's talk about today's sponsor, FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel. Get 10 times your first bet in bonus bets up to $200. The Reds are flying. I didn't get to. I don't get to uh, brag about them much, but they are absolutely flying right now. Go over there, bet on the Reds with FanDuel, because you can bet twenty bucks and you'll land two hundred dollars in bonus bets 
win or lose. The Reds have won a lot, so more uh, you're more likely to win right now, but that is $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under to who hits the first home run. You don't even the Reds don't even have to win for you to win your bet. All on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. No better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Big shout out to you guys for making us your first listen every single day. Every day or is Friday on the show. I think we're going to do a, kind of a similar version of this for football. It's not going to be as expansive. We're talking about every IU newcomer on the men's basketball team. There were a lot of them for the football team. So we're going to pick out a handful of them and, and uh, look at some that are intriguing. So if you want to see kind of our first dive into the football upcoming football season, We'll do that on Friday. Let's talk about Anthony Walker and Peyton Sparks, two guys who uh, had experience elsewhere and came to the Hoosiers, not just experience elsewhere, probably success elsewhere because Kalel Ware had experience elsewhere. I don't know that he had uh, success, I would say, in Oregon. I put both of these guys under rotation, and I think that's fair. I mean, I don't see either of these guys starting, but I see both of them being important pieces to Indiana next season. Let's start with Walker, a guy who I think a lot of people were surprised when he committed to Indiana. I think a lot of people were surprised Indiana having interest in him, a four-year player at Miami, a forward. It didn't really seem like a position of need for the Hoosiers, but if Indiana wants to play a more modern style with a lot more kind of athleticism and up-tempo nature to the offense, it makes sense why they would go after Walker. And if nothing else, this is something I discussed a number of times last uh, or during this kind of spring transfer period. IU needed people that had experience, and Walker is very much that. Walker and Xavier Johnson are going to be your leaders to this team this next season. And so uh, Walker is someone that not just has been around the block for four seasons. He's seen success at Miami. He knows what it takes to make deep tournament runs and nobody else on the Hoosiers has that level of experience. So he's going to come in. He's going to be an important rotation piece. I think next season He's going to be the backup kind of three, uh, four, whatever. He's, I guess, just more of a backup forward. It's probably the best way to describe him. Uh, I would think he would come in and spell uh, Mbako a fair amount. IU doesn't really have kind of a natural backup small forward, and I don't even think that Anthony Walker is really that. Uh, Walker is only a 20% three-point shooter and doesn't shoot them. So uh, he could be considered a three, but he's not really a a floor spacer. I, I just kind of consider him more of a wing player that gets to the rim. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how he's used with the Hoosiers. Again, a team, they've made improvements with having guys who can shoot. And some of those improvements might just be internally more than bringing people in. But there's still ways to go. What type of lineups can you put on the floor with Walker that has enough shooting as well as um, kind of spacing? Because if he's someone that excels at getting to the rim, what, what does that look like? If there isn't a lot of shooting on the floor, I don't know that it'll look pretty. So it'll be interesting to see how he's used, but I think you have a pretty high floor with him and that even if he's not, being out there or if he's not out there scoring or doing a lot of the statistical production, he's someone that's going to bring value to this team in a number of ways uh, this next season. So I think he's going to be a valuable rotation piece on this team. The other player the Hoosiers brought in that had experience elsewhere is Peyton Sparks, obviously six, nine center 
who was really good at Ball State the last two seasons. He's going to be the backup center on this team. Uh, I It's going to be, again, interesting to see how the bigs are rotated because I think Malik Renew's best spot, best position is also center, but he's someone that can play as a four. Sparks is absolutely going to be an energy type of big off of the bench, and I think there are ways you can – put lineups out there that he excels in. He's someone that would absolutely benefit from having more spacing and being able to beat up guys on the boards because he's a a tremendous rebounder. Averaged 8.7 per game last season, but uh, over three offensive rebounds per game. He's going to make you work. And I think that level of energy and uh, night in and night out effort and energy is going to make him a a valuable rotation piece. If he can bring that constant level of energy, no matter the the situation, the game, the opponent, the location, he's going to get minutes on this team. Now, it's going to be a different challenge for him because he started all 62 games he's played in college. He's not starting next year. And I, barring injury, he's probably not going to start a single game. Can he bring that level of energy to the game coming off the bench every single night. Some guys adjust to that better than others. I don't know how he's how his adjustment will be, but if he can bring that level of energy and effort off the bench, then he's going to be a very valuable piece to this team and to the rotation. He'll get his minutes, and he'll be very productive in them. Again, it might not even always show up statistically, in rebounds or points or blocks or things like that. But if he kind of raises the energy level for a team and gets everyone kind of back into the game, how many times do you see a a lethargic start to the game and then you insert a player, their energy level's high, they bring the team's energy level up with it, and then you go on a run after that? That's the type of impact I think he can have uh, more often than not with this team. So those are two guys that, I I don't think either of them have all conference uh, caliber potential, nor do I really think any of them have starter caliber potential. Again, barring energy uh, injury, excuse me. But that doesn't change how impactful and important they'll be on this team. They're going to be two very important pieces of this team next season, and I'm excited to see both of them. What type of role they're going to play with this team for different reasons. So. Let me know if you guys agree what type of roles they're going to have next year. Let's talk about two freshmen coming in and Gabe Cups and Ja'Kai Newton and what type of roles they're going to have and where I would kind of put them on these tier lists. We'll wrap that up here in a moment. So Gabe Cups and Ja'Kai Newton, uh, not the kind of highly touted five-star recruit that uh, – McKenzie and Baco is, but two guys that are talented in their own right and longtime commits to Indiana. They've been committed to the Hoosiers for, we thought that was going to be the foundation of a really good class. Obviously, a lot of things changed, but those two have been around for a while. I think two names the Hoosier fans are very familiar with. Gabe Cups is someone that I actually put in the rotation category. Uh, Ja'Kai Newton, I put in kind of the ones for the future. Why is there a difference, I think? Uh, with Cups, I think a lot of the, the difference between the two is simply going to be um, opportunity. And the Hoosiers have two point guards, two, I would say, natural point guards on the roster, and Xavier Johnson and Gabe Cups. Trey Galloway can be that, and he's improved in that regard but you don't really want him as the the true point guard on a team. And we've seen that time and time again. So Gabe Cups is going to have opportunities that might not be there as much for Ja'Kai Newton. Cups is going to come in and I think immediately be the backup point guard and have that opportunity from the start. Whether We'll see what he does with it. I, I have kind of high expectation for him. And that, I mean, it's rare for a freshman to come in and be a a rotation piece right away. And I can see Cups being someone that gets, 
you know, 15 minutes a night, if not more than that. And again, I think he's someone that kind of has a high floor and can help this team in a number of ways. Malik Renew last season averaged 15 minutes per game. Tamar Bates averaged 20. I could see Cups coming in, averaging somewhere in between those 15 to 20 minutes a game. Both those guys played 35 minutes in, or 35 games uh, in the season. That's the type of impact in terms of minutes and appearances that I think Cups will have. He's going to come in and do a lot of things as a backup point guard that the Hoosiers didn't have in terms of a backup point guard last year. They didn't have a backup point guard once Xavier Johnson went down. Uh, so that'll be a welcome sight that you can have times where you can spell Xavier Johnson and there's going to be nights where Gabe Cups is playing really well and he's going to get more minutes. He's someone that can run the offense. He can be a, I think he can be a floor spacer. It's going to be interesting to see how his three-point shot uh, kind of adapts to the college game. There's always a, a bit of a jump there. You can be a good high school three-point shooter. Are you going to be able to do that in the college game? There's always questions there, but he has a, a floor, a high floor to his game that's going to allow him to be a productive player to this team. He's not someone that turns the ball over. He's someone that can set up teammates to score. If you can do those two things, you're going to get on the floor as a point guard. So I think he's going to see minutes, and I would put him in that rotation category for this upcoming season. The flip side to that is Ja'Kai Newton. The reason I have him in the ones for the future is more because I'm there's some he's he's been he was injured for quite a while and he's still kind of working back from that injury. I don't know how close to 100% he is. I know he returned and played basketball, but I think there's still a period where you're returning from injury and you're rehabbing and he lost a good chunk of time due to that injury there's going to be, I think, some opportunity for him if he can show that he's healthy. The Hoosiers don't have kind of a solidified backup shooting guard, really. Trey Galloway is going to start. After that, C.J. Gunn could be that guy. Uh, maybe Gabe Cubs comes in as a second guard. Or maybe it's Ja'Kai Newton who steps in and shows some things. I just think there's more question marks about him do almost exclusively almost to injury, how much he's able to recover. He's been able to recover if he's able to kind of gain back a lot of that time he lost to injury during this summer. If he's able to do that, then I think he could come in and be an impactful player. But again, we saw last season in somewhat similar circumstances how hard it is for a guard to come in and be productive right away in the big 10 with someone like CJ Gunn. And so I know that their games may not be exactly alike, but how, I mean, we've seen it before that it's hard to be an impactful freshman in the big 10 from the get go, especially on a team like Indiana, where the, the hope is that they're going to be competing for uh, or at the top of the big 10 that's another debate for this season as well as how good the Hoosiers are going to be. But I I do think there is a not all that unlikely path for Ja'Kai Newton to be a rotation player on this team. I just have some questions about how he's rehabbed and where his game is at compared to where it was prior to injury. If he's able to be back at that level, it would be interesting to see what type of role he could have with this team because it could be an impactful one. The Hoosiers need some depth at the shooting guard position. If he's able to come in and provide that, that would be great. But right now I would have him in the ones for the future category. Let me know what you guys think uh, about all of these. Do you agree, disagree with where I put these guys? Would you put Kalel Ware into all-conference caliber? Would you drop him into rotation? Would you... Drop some of these guys, move them around, let me know down below. One last thing, if you guys missed it on a Monday, Jalen hood Shafino had his Summer League debut. It was a rough start. It was a rough game overall if you look at him 
statistically six of 19 from the field for 15 points, but it was a much better second half than it was first half. He was five of 11 for 13 points in the second half. I would say don't really take anything game by game in terms of kind of big picture. This is a develop uh, a, this is a whole new ball game for a lot of these rookies coming in, even with it being summer league, a lot of things are changing. I would say wait until everything's done and kind of look at summer league big picture. But there were a lot of things Jalen did in that game that IU fans would be familiar with coming off pick and rolls, showed an ability to get to the rim. His in-between game wasn't uh, really working for him. And I, that's where a lot of those shots miss, but uh, I think he'll be fine long-term. Trey Jackson Davis did not play. He has a hamstring injury that kept him out Monday. Both of them are set to play on tonight, Wednesday, excuse me. Uh, Trace's game is at 6 p.m. on ESPN2, and Jalen's game is on 8 p.m. on ESPN. So back-to-back, you could watch both of those guys if you want. And I don't know if Trace will be available. There wasn't really anything about his injury. It was kind of last minute that we learned he wouldn't play. So. Tune in, see if he's playing. If not, you can wait until 8 and watch the Lakers against the Spurs. Victor Wimbanyama is not playing, so it won't be a, a showdown there. But Jalen will be, and you guys can see if he can bounce back a little bit from that uh, first game in which he struggled. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Every day, as I said, Friday on the show, we'll do this for the football team. So... Uh, again, will be kind of our first big dive into the football season upcoming. Follow us on Twitter if you guys have not already. Subscribe to the podcast, whether on Spotify, Overcast, whether on YouTube. Let us know what you guys think of all the new looks and the new graphics and whatnot we have over on YouTube. Leave that rating and review if you can. Helps us out immensely. As always, guys, I hope everybody has a terrific Wednesday. Uh, I hope work doesn't last too long today as we get back in the groove. But most importantly, LEO.